My name is Prashant. I'm 46 year old and have had ankylosing spondylitis for past 25 years. And today I'm going to discuss what exactly is ankylosing spondylitis, how debilitating it is, how can you recognize whether you even have it, and what are the impacts that it has in your body, and how can you think of leading a powerful life even after having this disease. So I hope this video really helps you to understand this disease and how to cope up with it. So before we proceed any further, I wanted to give a medical disclaimer alert that I am not a doctor and this video is just for educating you know, fellow ankylosing spondylitis warriors who are out there, who are trying to look for answers, who want to understand what it means to have ankylosing spondylitis from a patient's perspective. So what is ankylosing spondylitis? So ankylosing spondylitis is, to put it in a layman's term, is basically arthritis of spine. Okay, so it's progressive in nature, which means that it strikes at a very young age, predominantly in your 20s or a bit earlier than that. So it, stri it strikes young men and women, and it keeps on progressing till you reach the age of 50s and 60s. So it's a progressive disease. It, it's not, it's not a, a static disease that you have once and that's the symptom and that's it. No, it keeps on progressing as you go. So how does this progress? So there are two aspects to ankylosing spondylitis. One is your clinical symptoms, okay? And second is your pain and inflammation. So let's talk about pain. So the pain happens mostly in your shoulders, in your joints, basically. So shoulders, um, the pelvis region, the knee, the ankles, you know, the wrist, as well as the jaw. So it happens all over all over the joints, main joints in our body. But the prominent part where it hits the most is your spine. So basically lower, lower back, okay? And your sacroiliac joints, so the pelvis region, so just inside your bums, so the hip joints, as well as the joints in your neck, okay? So the cervical, cervical spine and the joints in your rib cage, okay? So basically the, the joints that are there in your ribs, okay? So it strikes there. So these are the prominent joints where it actually hits the most, okay? That doesn't mean that you, know, you will not have ankylosing spondylitis patients who have swollen knees or ankles or who have issues with their wrist and fingers. So there are those, you know, those also, but predominantly all of these patients will have a lower back pain, a pain in their sacroiliac joints, maybe alternating, uh, alternating hips, or a pain in your in their lum in their lumbar and cervical joints in their neck, with very a, a stiffness in movement. So these are the predominant signs that they will have. So one aspect is pain. The second aspect is inflammation. The cartilage between your joints starts to degenerate, and there is a calcium deposition which starts to happen in your joints. So this this starts to happen from the lower lower back. Okay, moves on to the sacroiliac joints then goes on in your hips, then goes on in your various, various places. So when calcium deposition starts happening in all these joints, naturally when you move, it starts to pain. Okay, especially when you, are when you move after a long period of inactivity. Okay, so that's one of the indications that when you're having a long period of inactivity and you start to move, then if you're getting a sudden pain in your back, then you should be very, if this is happening consistently at the same points that I, that I just spoke, then you should be very, whether it's a ankylosing spondylitis or not. So let me talk about what are the symptoms with which you can recognize ankylosing spondylitis. Now, ankylosing spondylitis strikes at a very young age, so it is hard to diagnose because we tend to ignore our pains when we are young, okay? And naturally, when we go to the doctors, the markers are not properly seen in our body and the doctors are also not able to understand what's going on with you till you reach a certain advanced level. Okay, so, but how, what are those, what are these symptoms that we can recognize and, you know, be wary of when we have pain, okay? So one, whether your pain is happening consistently. So look for if it's happening every day at the same time, especially when you, when you move after a long period of inactivity or do you get fatigued often? Okay, when you do such certain activities, do you get fatigued for a long period of time and you want to sleep and lie down? And even after sleep, you don't get, get to feel better and your joints starts to feel stiff, okay? And does this stiffness happen, let's say, a lot when you get up in the mornings? So this is a predominantly what, what we call as 
morning stiffness, which happens in the joints, especially in the lower back, in the neck, when a patient gets up, okay? And this stiffness starts to reduce as the day progresses, or when you take a warm bath, for example, okay? So then you have to be concerned that maybe this is some kind of joint issue that's happening with you. The third or the fourth thing that you should look for is whether your family member has this uh, joint, uh, joint pain issue. Predominantly when, when there is a, um, when you have a joint problem, these are basically also there among your family members. So look for, look for your father, your mother, or uh, grandparents, or your cousins, your siblings. If any one of them have joint issues, especially just the way that you are experiencing in your lower back or in your, in your lumbar spine, then it could be that they have some kind of arthritis. And normally it could be a rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis and further, further tests need to be done on that. So look for your siblings, look out in your family if anyone has this. So these are some of the sim symptoms that you should be wary of, especially when you are young. Now, if you are having these symptoms, then the next step is to look for blood markers. So in the blood markers, there are certain ways that you can progress. First of all, look for a rheumatologist, a good rheumatologist, okay? So, and get your blood markers done in terms of your ESR, CRP, and HLA-B27 test. I'll, I'll cover each of these individually. So again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving information based on what I have experienced and what I have spoken to other people. So let's, let's, let me tell you what are the tests that can be done. So ESR and CRP is basically blood, blood tests which are done in order to understand the inflammation in your body. So higher the level, the higher the inflammation in your body, okay? And HLA-B27 is a gene which is predominantly present in people who are having ankylosing spondylitis. Now, presence of this gene does not mean that you have ankylosing spondylitis, but 90% of ankylosing spondylitis patients have HLA-B27 gene. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so these are some of the blood tests that can be done. So if you're HLA-B27 positive, and if you have higher ESR and CRP, the next step is to look for chest X-ray. Okay, so look at the X-ray of your spine, look at the X-ray of your, of your SI joints, get them analyzed. If they are fused, it will be visible. If the fusion is not visible in your X-ray, the next level to go is look for MRI. Okay, so in MRIs, predominantly you will come to know whether there is any issue in your muscle, in your bones, or in your joints. So these will be you know, spelled out very clearly in the MRI reports. So these are some of the medical diagnoses that can be done. So there is clinical diagnosis, which I just covered, and there is medical diagnosis that can be done, okay? Now, let me talk about how this disease impacts our daily lives. So the first thing that you will experience is a lot of pain. So the pain will be there constantly throughout the day, especially when you are not active during the day, okay? The pain goes away when you are slightly mobile or when you do some exercises, the pain goes away or when you take warm baths, okay? You get fatigued, you get tired a lot. So you'll feel a lot more tired, a lot more you know, depressed uh, with pain. You also get a lot of brain fog, okay? So these are some of the emotional, emotional side of the pain that you have. Now, let's look at some of the physical impacts that it can have. So one, another impact that can, it can have is that you can, you can develop psoriasis in your skin. So kind of rashes, you'll, you, know, you might have small rashes in your body. In some cases, you will also get uveitis attacks. So uveitis attacks is basically inflammation of the eyeball, the retina, okay? It can attack uh, on the anterior side of your retina or so anterior side of the eyeball, basically retina or the posterior side. So when, we, when, it, when it attacks the anterior side, we call it as uveitis. So you need to look for uh, symptoms like whether you have dry eyes, whether you need to rub your eyes constantly, whether you have pain in one particular, a throbbing pain in one particular eye, okay? So uveitis attacks are something to be very, very careful about because this can lead to blindness if not treated on time, okay? So that's another thing that ankylosing spondylitis patients need to look out for. So I hope this video really gives you an understanding of what it is to have ankylosing spondylitis. How can you look for symptoms within your family or you know understand whether you have ankylosing or spondylitis or not, 
how do you get it diagnosed clinically and what is the way to lead a powerful life having having this debilitating disease so if you really like the information shared in this video then please subscribe to our channel and yes live powerfully live joyfully and see you soon in the very next video